Hello and welcome to first tutorial of a short series um, where I want to cover um, the creation of uh, roots for trees uh, and uh, we will do this inside Xrock 3.5. How to create roots? That's actually one of the most asked questions and um, there are different approaches. Some of them are more obvious than others um, and we will start creating roots with the help of uh, tree components. We don't have a dedicated root component, but we can make use of a tree component um, to create roots. And therefore I started or created a first simple tree and we will uh, try to add some roots uh, to this tree. Uh, you can see here, this is our simple tree and group simply um, consisting out of two tree components. We'll group them and hide them. So at first um, I will create a simple object and uh, drag it onto the root component. Um, we can rename that one to um, roots. Uh, I'm doing that because later on we will have uh, the possibility if we create several obje objects, root objects, then we can group them inside this roots object and then simply rescale or translate um, so that's simply a, a little helper object. Now add a tree component. For now we can hide the base tree object or the simple tree object. So this is um, the tree component um, in its default state. I'll rename that one to root base one. We will reduce the length to about one. Then we will increase the thickness. We can fine tune that all later on. And now go to the primitive tab of this root base object. Go for the primitive type parameter, parameter and um, change that one to none. So now it's invisible, but it's still there and it still can create child objects. So now add another tree component as child object. I rename that one to root one. You can see it's a rough triangle profile. So I'll increase the number of points of the primitive tab so that the objects um, will have a round shape. Now select the root base object and we have to adjust some of those uh, parameters that you can find, find on the tree tab. So go for distribution. Um, we will use an even distribution along uh, this short length of our root base object and for now I'll reduce the number of child objects to about seven. We, we, we can fine tune that also later on. Then we will have to go for the angle parameter and change that one so that the uh, root objects start to point downwards like they do in this case. Now we can unhide the um, base or simple tree object. So this is already starting to look, well, like some simple roots. Um, now we can move this root base objects a little bit upwards. Go for translation Z, use a 0 0.5, probably even 0 0.7, something like that. And I think I'll reduce the length um, of the root base to about 0 0.7. So now we have uh, the roots emerging um, from the base of our simple tree. We can go uh, to growth scale. I'm increasing uh, the growth scale and uh, now you'll see that the roots are starting getting longer and longer and therefore select root 1 and counteract by reducing the length and now of course it depends a lot on the type of roots you're going for 
So uh, we won't go into uh, detail or we'll create some specific routes. I'll just play around a little bit so that you can see um, what different kind of styles you can create. So the next parameter you should look at is probably uh, the shape parameter of the root object. So here you can adjust the thickness. Then another one uh, which might be helpful is uh, deviation or deviate. Uh, simply increase that. Um, deviate is a parameter uh, which looks if uh, um, a child object is created or should be created and at each position where XROC places a node for a child object it starts to change the direction of growth. So usually you, you'd see that at those bends um, child objects would start to emerge. And I think we don't need that many so I'll reduce the number of child objects and you'll see that we have less of those bends. So that's one um, option. And now I think um, the profile of those um, root objects is too small. So with the root one object selected, go to the primitive tab and then go for scale XYZ. If look, lock scale is um, active, you simply can enter, let's say, two, see what happens. Now those objects are getting thicker. I think that's actually pretty good. And um, now we can use the shape parameter to fine tune the um, thickness. And I'll simply drag the last control point a little bit downwards, something like that, and probably use a shape like that. So now we have um, some simple roots. Of course, um, it's looking strange in that area, but we, we shouldn't uh, think about that area because um, those parts of the tree usually are covered by soil, of course. Um, and they are sticking in the earth. It's more um, this area which is important uh, so that we don't have a simple, um, well, uh, cylinder which is uh, going in, uh, directly into the earth. So now we have a irregular shape which is giving us a sense of a um, um, well, branching structure which is growing below the ground. So that's actually all you have to do. We are using um, a tree component um, as base, make it invisible, reduce the length, and then we are using this short um, invisible tree component to create some child branches. And those branches simply um, should point downwards, which, we, uh, which you can do with help of the angle parameter. And um, of course, you also could use uh, or make use of the different tropisms. So for example, if, if you want that those um, roots start to bend upwards, you could use um, phototropism because uh, some roots um, usually grow uh, directly under the surface. And there are, of course, other roots which would point directly downwards into the earth. That depends on uh, the tree, that depends on the species. And uh, with XFROG you have all options uh, to create the roots that you need. And actually it's even possible um, to uh, create a complete branching structure uh, below the ground. If, if, if you're going for something like that, um, Right here we could copy the first root object that we have, make it a child object and we are going for a dense and a growth scale to make those a little bit larger. And now you can see that we have or are starting to get a complex um, branching system uh, below the ground, but usually that's a lot 
um, too much. Um, we don't need those uh, secondary routes because um, all that stuff is covered um, by uh, the ground. So all you need in most cases is something like that to break up the regular shape of the cylinder um, trunk. So that's all for this approach. Um, the next video will cover a different approach um, where we will make use of uh, some of the deformers of um, XROC to create an irregular shape or a root shape um, which is uh, then uh, growing downwards into the ground. So thanks for watching, see you next time.